let's get started and talk about what to me is probably the most exciting new feature in Lightroom 4, and that is the book module. So depending on how much work you want to do up front, you can organize all of your images like maybe in a collection in the library or you can wait and do that in the book module. What I've done is I've actually gone through and just found pairs of images that I like from my Italy trip and I've set them next to each other in the library module. Now I can always make changes to this later but at least it gave me kind of a good starting point for the flow of my book. So let's go ahead and click on the book module and that will take us there. Now let's start in the upper right hand side underneath the book settings. So we have chosen to partner with Blurb. They've been an excellent partner. Recently they've made a ton of improvements to the quality of their books and um, we're really, really happy with that and we think it's going to be a very positive experience. Now, if you're designing your own books in a product like Adobe InDesign, well, this is not going to give you as much flexibility, obviously, as a product dedicated to page layout. But I'm quite amazed and I've created some books that I absolutely love um, using the templates and they just don't seem very limited to me. Plus, at the very end of this, I'll give you a, a kind of cool little workaround using the print module so you can really create whatever kind of template you want. But that's getting ahead of us. So let's go ahead and look here. You can either, like I said, we can export to Blurb or we can always export to a PDF file, which I've also done. And then I've used my reader, my Acrobat reader on my iPad in order to read those PDF files. So that's been really quite nice as well. If I'm going to choose to publish to Blurb, then there are five different sizes that I can choose from. You'll notice here there's a small square and I have an example of that one right here. And then we have a standard um, layouts 8 by 10 and 10 by 8, depending obviously if your project is going to be horizontal or vertical. And we have the larger sizes as well, the large landscape here that I have an example of, and there's also a large square format that you can select. So Today, let's go ahead and go with a standard uh, landscape. You can also select from different cover types. So there's a hard cover image wrap, there's the hard cover dust jacket, and a soft cover. I think we all know what the um, hard cover and soft cover are. This would be a, a dust jacket here where it actually opens up. And we get to design, you know, not only what goes on the outside, but also what goes on the inside of that. And we'll take a look at that in a minute as well. And then you can also select your different paper types here. So we can select from the pearl photo, we can do an uncoated, we can do matte, and we can also do luster. So I'm gonna stick with the pearl photo. And you can see when I change these options, obviously my front and back cover options are gonna change as well. Now I seem to have turned off my guide, so let me turn those back on. That was just a keyboard shortcut I used. It was Command Shift G or Control Shift G for guides on Windows. And there's also a panel dedicated to guides down here that we'll go through in a minute. But I wanted you to be able to see the different areas that you could either place your photographs or your text. Okay, I'm gonna change this from a uh, dusk jacket back to the image wrap there. All right, and you don't have to pick your cover like first or anything. There's no order that you have to put your images in. You can just drag and drop your front cover and your back um, cover at any point in time. All right, you can also choose to have a logo page, which is quite nice because it does bring down the price and the logo page is just simply this, the blurb logo on the very back page. So, um, and you can turn it on and off and then calculate the difference here and see if it's worth it to you, but I think it's totally worth it. All right, let's go ahead and look at auto layout now. Now this is important. This is how we're gonna start laying out our book. There's auto layout and there's a clear layout and there's also a book preference. Now see, I've already taken this collection of images and I've come into the book module before with this collection. If I hadn't, I could tell Lightroom to just auto flow the book for me and it would do that based on my book preferences. So if we go here, you can see, here's my book preferences. So I can choose whether my default photo zoom is zoom to fit or zoom to fill, right? Because maybe the aspect ratio of my photo doesn't exactly match the area, the, like the box that I'm going to put or the cell that I'm gonna put the photo into. So I can choose to fill or fit. I prefer fit so it doesn't crop by default and then I can go in and zoom and crop it if I want. And then here's the option to start the new books by auto filling. So had I not already been in the book module, I could have selected this, but 
I've already been there, so that's why it didn't auto flow for me. And then we can choose to fill your text boxes with fill text, which is just kind of standard. Um, it just puts a little bit of text in there so you recognize that you need to go in and put a caption. You can put in your title metadata or your caption metadata. Now, I happen to have already captioned all of these images, so I definitely want to change this to the caption metadata. And just so you know, if you do choose the fill text and then you forget to caption something, the fill text is not going to print. So don't be concerned that you're going to fill with some kind of fill text that might accidentally slip by. It won't. It won't print. It's kind of like a guide in that, in that manner. All right, so I want my caption metadata, and I'm going to constrain the caption to text-safe areas, right? Because when you lay out a book, there's going to be some areas around the edge. There's going to be bleed areas that we can see and also text-safe areas. So I want to constrain the captions so that they don't accidentally get cut off. All right. Now, before I just click Auto Layout, I want to set up some presets for that. So we'll go ahead and go into our Auto Layout Preset Editor. And you'll notice that we have a few presets right here, and then you can create your own. And it's really simple. So what do you want to do with the left side and the right side? Well, I'm going to actually lay out the right side, and then just tell this that I want the same on both sides. So I can choose from, do I want one photo per page, and then look at all these different layouts. So these are all different ways that you can position your images on the page. Some of the layouts have cool, funky edges, some of them are more text-based, some of them are more photo-based. And when you get really more involved and put like four photos per page, then the layouts get more and more complex. So there's a ton of different options that you can choose from. For right now, I just want two photos per page. And I want them to be um, next to each other, left and right. And so these are the cells that I want Lightroom to automatically create. Again, there's tons of different options here, so just take a few minutes and go through those. But this is the one that I want. Now, the zoom photos, again, I want that to set to fit. The match long edges is a really interesting feature. If you, say, wanted um, verticals and horizontals next to each other, Lightroom's going to basically try to match the weight by making the long edges the same size, so it would actually take the larger file and scale it down so those long edges match. And it, it's visually, it's very appealing. Um, but I actually pair mine, I paired mine already before I went in here, so all my, my images are like two horizontals and then two verticals together, so I don't need to turn that on. I want it to add the photo captions. I want it to align with photo. And look at this. I can even use a text style preset. So we'll talk about that in a minute when we go to the text panel. But it's really cool that I can set up all my text options and then save those out as presets. All right, so let's go ahead. You can see that I've, I've edited it since last time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. But if I wanted to save it as a new preset, I could do that. Or I can just update the preset that I've already created, which is my 10 inch by 8 inch book, two up on the left and the right. Excellent. So let's click Done. And let's go ahead and click Auto Layout. And look at that. Just like that, it goes through my whole collection of images. And it's just going to lay them out two images per page. So let's scroll back up to the top. Now, let's talk a little bit about viewing our images. So right now, I can see all of the images in my book, and I can see the two page spreads. But if I want to zoom in, there's kind of some critical keyboard shortcuts you should know. So right now, I'm viewing multiple pages, and the keyboard shortcut for that is Command or Control E. If I want to just view a single spread, like maybe page 2 and page 3, then I use Command R. So you can see I selected that so it went directly to this view. If I just want to see one page, then I use Command or Control T to zoom into that page. Now, I can also use Command Plus and Command Minus to zoom back through this whole multi-page spread and single page. And again, if I'm in multi-page, I can also double click, and that will take me right to just seeing that single page. Now, I should have down here some tools, and they're missing. So I'm going to tap the T key. The T key always shows me my tools while I'm in any of my modules. And now we can see that I can navigate from one page to the next very quickly here. Do Command or Control R. We can see the spread. Again, now I'm navigating from spread to spread and Command E, and I can see all of my multiple pages at one time. All right, but all of my pages aren't actually in the right order, so it's very easy to also switch or um, move pages around. I want page 3 to come before 2, so I just click and drag, and you can see I get this highlight of the yellow. That tells me that I can drop that page there, and it will go ahead and re-lay out all the pages. I mean, it just moves the pages around so easily. You can do the same thing with photos as well. So if I want this photo to be on the other side, I want to swap these 
All I need to do is drag it and drop it, and now those two images will swap. And it's not just on the same page. You know, if I wanted this image down here, we could drag and drop it, and it would swap those images as well. And of course, if you don't like that, you can always do Command Z, and it will undo the last thing that you've done. Depending on your monitor, you might also want to change how you're viewing this multi-page view. So you can see here that we can actually zoom in or zoom out on these thumbnails. So that's really nice when I have a, a really large screen in front of me at a high resolution when I'm, you know, not recording this. I can see, like, my entire book laid out on my screen, and it's really easy for me to move around pages and, um, and double page spreads. Okay, so what about changing a layout? Let's go down to this spread right here. I'll use Command or Control R to kind of zoom in there. These two images are looking rather small. So what I'd like to do is actually change the page. So you'll notice that there is a page panel over here, but it's probably easier just to click on this little disclosure triangle and then change the page here. So if I just want to change from being two up vertical to two up horizontal, I can simply click on that in order to select it, and you can see how easy that was to change. If I wanted to put this on its own page, like I want to separate these and make these both large, then I can add a page, but if I add a page, look, Here's the icon of the page it will add. So I could go and deselect and then come over here and then decide, you know, I really just want one photo. And then we could pick that one photo. See, now I've got my clear photo right here and it's added that for me. Let's see what that looks like in the context of the whole book. See how it's added the page at the very end? That's not really what I wanted. So I'm going to do a little undo. We'll come back up here to page 7, and it's probably easier just to say, I just want a blank page. So it added a blank page as page 8, and it just reflowed all the rest of the pages for me. There's nothing I have to do. It's just as easy as that. Then, if I decide that I want this image and just this image on that blank page, I can just drag and drop it to that page, and it will auto-choose a layout. Now again, if I want to change that layout, because I want the image smaller, all I have to do is click. But you can see here, let's go ahead and zoom in on that one. You can see that it's not filling, the photograph isn't at the right aspect ratio, so it's not filling that whole cell. Well, all I have to do is right mouse click and say zoom the photo to fit the cell, and it will fit it. And now look, I can go ahead and reposition it within that cell. Or if I don't like that, look at I can zoom each individual image by itself, or if we move to the next page, if I wanted to, I can select multiple images by just holding down the Shift key, and then we can zoom more than one image at a time. Now we can also see in this view that my captions have come across, and they're right down here. So they came in just automatically, but if we did want to go in and change that caption, we could. Look, there's a whole caption panel right here. It tells me that I can align it in different areas, above or over, and have an offset. I could also add a page caption instead. But we're going to talk a lot more about, about typography and about captions in another video. So for now, what I'll do is I'll go back to the multi-page layout. And I want to point out that at the top here, where it says Create Saved Book, I have not saved this book yet. And we've changed this a little bit in the way that we handle um, saving things like in the slideshow, how to save a slideshow, how to save a print, and how to save a book. So I want to make sure that I save my book right now, and we will call this Venice 2. And I'm going to save it. You can see here I've got a placement. I will save it inside my Italy collection and go ahead and create that. And now look, we can see right here in my Italy collection I've got a book project. And if I was finished with my book, I could go ahead and send the book to Blurb using this icon in the lower right, or I can export the book to PDF. So obviously once we've saved this book, we can still make additional changes, and we'll talk a lot more about how to maybe customize this book if you wanted to have a much more complex layout. But I think you can see how easy it is to create a simple book, and then you would just either export that book to PDF or send the book to Blurb, and we'll talk more about that in the next video.